is Brittany. So, today I'm going to be doing a movie review, and today I'll be reviewing Back to the Future. So, Back to the Future was released in theaters on July 3rd, 1985, directed by Robert Zemeckis, starring Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, Lee Thompson, and Crispin Glover. And this is just a really great uh, sci-fi movie and it's just not sci-fi it has other um, genres too it, like it has at least a bit of it there's some romance there's some comedy there's some a, a bit of action in there too and it's just great and I just really love Back to the Future and and I just love the the story of Back to the Future and even though it is very awkward when he goes back in time but you know it starts off where the story takes place in 1985 and just when um, Christopher Lloyd who plays um, Dr. Emmett Brown and when he calls him in the middle of the night, somewhere in the morning hours, I think it was around, I'm trying to think, one, maybe two, because by the time he got there it was like, I think around two or three a.m. So it was like somewhere in the early morning hours. And so, of course, by the time he gets there, um, he shows him his um, his great invention of, you know, of the time machine. But of course, he's not looking at it as a time machine because it looks like a car. It's a DeLorean. But what he doesn't know is that the car itself is a time machine where you get in it and you you go to um, and. Um, now Emmett Brown, he explains this better, but there are these buttons that you press and you'll, and it, yeah, there are these buttons that you can press where you can go to or anywhere you want to go to of your destination into the past or even to the future. But, um, yeah, I just love that concept. It's a very interesting way of to travel back in time, especially in a time travel movie. And I've seen some time travel movies, but this one, I think this was like the very first one I've seen. And I just found it so interesting, so fascinating. And so when he was, you know, pressing the buttons on this keypad, you know, of these numbers, and it will show exactly where are you going. I think like, I think it shows the month, the date, and the year of where you're going. I just find that very interesting. And so, as he shows him this, he even tells him, shows him that when when it goes up to. 88 miles per hour that you'll you know it'll go really fast and all of a sudden you're pretty much zapped into the past of where you want to go and so as he's showing him this in a big empty mall parking lot I think that was just a great way to show it to give that demonstration and then of course it comes back but but then uh, something goes wrong because um, there are these people I think he traded um, I know this he traded um, plutonium with them and so because of that these people um, Libyans that they um, that they were off to kill him and my question is why was that like why was it that when they just happened to find him to kill him 
like wh what was the reason for and I, I'm still confused by, by that was it because when he traded the um, plutonium that was it because they didn't I mean I don't know did something somehow went wrong and they weren't happy with the trade and maybe either they wanted more or maybe they wanted uh, something better I'm not sure but when they pretty much killed him off and you know when the locust happened to be seen being killed off quite early it's just this uh, unexpected shock you know of this surprise and it's like you know guys even I wasn't expecting that because when that happened I thought okay he had dropped his gun he pretty much he surrendered so he has his hands up in the air so I thought okay so maybe they're just gonna leave him alone but I wasn't sure but then they were you know this guy who had the gun would kept shooting him and he pretty much died and I remember seeing that I was so shocked and I, w I just kept thinking like no way like please tell me that this character did not just got killed off so early in the movie and I'm like oh no okay why why is it starting off like this so somehow I thought okay is it gonna get dark from here but turns out no even though he did got killed off I kind of thought okay maybe this is gonna get a little bit dark maybe this is gonna go of where I'm not expecting it to go so I thought it was gonna get a little dark but it didn't and and I'm actually glad of that but it shows where he for, for Marty to escape from the Libyans he goes into the DeLorean of the time machine I'm sorry <laughs> I just saw something in the corner of my eye it looked like something was coming down so I just assumed it was a uh, spider um no all good it's just clear I think it was just I think it was just an orb I was seeing I think so anyway and so as he gets into the DeLorean well he doesn't know he did turn on the uh, he turned on the time circuits and of course I think with the time circuits that the flux capacitor is also turned on as well and then as he's driving away from them because they're trying to kill him too but even though they probably don't know who he is they're still they're trying to kill him as well for no reason and so as he drives faster it goes up to 88 miles per hour and then what he doesn't realize is that the the month day and year were already on of on the time circuits and and that he traveled back to the past in 1955 and at that time his parents were teenagers they were at high school and so and of course at that time his friend dr emmett brown was still alive and and so yeah it is it's quite interesting i just loved how he did went back in time and you know that is just so new and everything but what's interesting though is that when he meets um dr emmett brown um his friend um in the past that like he's just he doesn't know what to think and of course at first he doesn't believe him but then when he shows him yeah then he starts to believe it and but then he shows him a videotape a tape of um where they were both recording of what was going on of his invention of the delorean time machine in 1985 so yeah, that's pretty much when I think he really believed it. Um, but what's interesting but also very awkward is that when he meets his parents as teens, um, 
what's awkward about it is that his mom, of course his mom, she doesn't know that's her son and and yet um, because how she met Marty's dad is that her dad accidentally hit him with a car but that's what happened to Marty because that was supposed to happen with George. He was supposed to want he was supposed to be the one to be hit with a car of by uh, Lorraine's father. But instead, when when that happened, Marty got in the way. He pushed his dad out of the way, so he got hit by the car and he was taken to the house. And that's when he was resting. But he doesn't know he's resting on his mom's bed in her room. And so she was, uh, you know, she liked him. Like, I, I think she saw him and thought, you know, that he looked cute. And she just, she was pretty much, you know, hitting on him. She, and whenever she would say something, she would flirt with him. But it was just, you know, it's just very awkward. Um, but then, of course, you know, later way later in the movie when she does kiss him she comes to realize like just how awkward it is but even though she still doesn't know that's her son but the thing is um because she, she even told him i don't know what it is but when i kissed you it's like i'm kissing my brother and that's the whole point like even though she can't explain it it's that's because they are related, they're mother and son, even though she doesn't know that, but she, I, I think she will know that, <clears throat> or I think she probably won't remember it because she'll um, have Marty later on, um, you know, when she's, when her and George are married, you know, so, but the, the thing is, I'm sorry if I'm getting a bit off here but I'm just saying is that I just love the story I love the concept of it even though it is awkward with the interactions between Marty and Lorraine because that's his mom and even though she doesn't know that but she she's attracted to him and she's like whenever she talks to him she talks to him in a very flirty way it's like you know, and of course, it's just, you know, awkward to watch, but at the same time, it's still a good movie, and, you know, he's also trying to talk to his dad, but even with the interactions with his dad, it doesn't quite go so well because he can see that his father doesn't have a lot of confidence in himself, and so he's really, you know, trying to be there you know he's you know really trying to talk to him and everything and so so I can say even though he's trying to talk to him you know trying to give him advice and be there okay um, I'm sorry about that uh, yeah someone was here at the door and so um, yeah, our family dog did start barking. So, yeah, that's pretty much what happened. So, I'm not sure who that was, but... I think it's just someone going door to door, maybe giving out brochures or something. I'm not sure. Um, maybe. So, anyway, um... So yeah, when he is talking to his dad, he's trying to give him advice, and he's pretty much talking to him like like a friend. And so he even did tell him that all it takes is a bit self confidence, and maybe um, I know some people may not like this saying, but he did say um, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. And I do believe that. I think if you could put your mind to something, even if it's just one thing, 
then you could pretty much do anything. But anything doesn't mean everything. It just means if you could put your mind to do something um, that you really want to do, and I believe if you're very passionate about something, then you can be able to do that, and maybe a little bit more, and and all that. So I do believe that. So yeah, like I said, I just love the story, and I love the time travel concept of it, and um, even with the interaction between his father and his mother. Well, well, with his mother, it's mostly very awkward, but with his father, I would say he's trying to be there for him. He's pretty much talking to him like a friend, trying to give him advice, you know, be there for him, because he sees he doesn't really have confidence in, in himself, but, you know, he does somehow um, teach him that, and that's where George was able to stand up to himself of, of Biff, and when he pretty much punched him, but the way he punched him was so hard, that Biff looked like he pretty much spun, you know, it looked like he spun in circles, <laughs> and then he just fell on the ground, <laughs> but yeah, I, I like that though, I, I thought that was good, that he actually for once not only stood up for himself, but he stood up for Lorraine and that he punched him because he was defending for Lorraine. And so, yeah, that, that was real good. And I think from there, I think he became a little bit more confident in, in himself. Not only to defend for himself, but to de defend those he cares about, you know, including Lorraine. Oh, and I also love, um, Especially where, you know, even after everything's good and when he sees his mom getting together um, at the prom and, and you know, then when he goes to meet up with um, Doc, that, you know, then he gets ready to go back in time of, of where he belongs and that's 1985. And so, I just love that scene because it's just... Uh, it was just amazing and I think in a way it's quite um, nostalgic as well because it, I would say it was very iconic the of that scene where he's driving uh, the DeLorean as fast as he can and just when he thinks he may not make it and he closes his eyes but then uh, the hand moves and all of a sudden the lightning um, strikes and then you see this you know, uh, this huge strike of lightning that hits, and and he makes it. So he makes it back to the time where he belongs. And so, yeah, it's just a very iconic scene, and I just love that. I, I love the way it was shot and everything, because it looks amazing. And so... Yeah, I just love Back to the Future. Uh, the first one is definitely my favorite. And um, let's see, so to rate it, I would give it um, an A. I would give it um, 9 out of 10. I would also give it 85% um, uh, and no, no pun intended. But I'm not sure that's a pun. Um, and I would also give it uh, four stars. Yes, I just love Back to the Future, so that's my review. Um, I love everything about it. I love the cast, their performances. Um, I love the way Robert Zemeckis directed the movie. And I love the, the shots and how everything was filmed and how certain shots just looked amazing and even iconic and just very memorable and I just love where you get these um, funny moments in between and these um, romantic moments as well between uh, Lorraine and George and these action scenes as well and you know since it's all sci-fi um, yeah I just love that how it has a little bit of everything of each genre 
um, well, maybe not of every genre, but at least those certain ones of action, comedy, romance. Um, yeah, I just love it. And this is definitely one of those movies I will watch over and over again. Um, without question. <laughs> um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And also to let you know soon, on Saturday on my podcast on the Britney Dimension, I'm going to have a special guest with me where we're going to be discussing um, a movie dreams and the paranormal so be in tune and look out for that and um new episodes will be uploaded every saturday on my podcast and you can hear it on spotify so if you're on spotify um you can listen to it on there and for more um movie content like this subscribe and click on the on the bell so you'll be notified when I upload so that's all for today and I'll see you at the movies <laughs>